So here is a much better close up look of the load buster device. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So this video is actually a follow up from the opening capacitor bank video. I had a ton of questions about when I looked away from the switch as I was opening the device. You see, when these switches open, not so much the new ones, but the older porcelain ones had a tendency to break. Also, the load buster device could fail. It's a pretty good product. It doesn't happen very often. However, if there is an equipment failure and you're staring right at it, you're gonna get a real bright arc. Safety glasses or not, it's not pleasant to be looking at. That's why it's a good habit when you're operating these switches to look away as you actually break the load. Let's take a real up close look at how the load buster tool worked while I was opening that capacitor bank in the video a couple weeks back. So now what happens when you're breaking load, your power comes in through the top of the switch, power goes out, and the fuse is actually inside what we call a door. So we call it a door because it opens and it closes. If you want to see exactly how the fuse link is set up inside these doors, I've got a video, I think I posted it last year if you want to check out, maybe I'll drop it down in the comments. If this cutout is only feeding two or three houses, when you open that with your insulated stick, there might be a tiny little spark between here and here, but it's going to break that load fairly easy. So hypothetically speaking, you got 200 amps in this thing. If you open that fast enough, it should break the arc but should isn't how we do things in our trade. Actually, 200 amps, no, you probably wouldn't break it anyways. Now the magic number is 10 amps. Now that's not 10 amps at 120 or 240 volts, that's 10 amps at 7200 volts or higher depending on the system that you're working on. Once you get into that amperage, it's high enough that even opening this fairly quickly, it will draw an arc as you've seen in my introduction video. It's quite an aggressive arc, the wind can take that blow it into the next phase in the ground, it can really cause some damage. So that's why we use the load buster to break the arc. Also, there are some switches that have a load break chute mounted right on top where the arc is carried in between the plastic that basically snuffs out that arc before it has a chance to form. This particular model of the load buster is good up to 25,000 volts and its nominal function for interrupting current is 600 amps. So what happens with this device is it's hooked onto the top of the cutout and clicked right into that brass ring here. And as you're opening it, let's give it a jerk open. So at this point, the power is not yet interrupted. The power is going through and through this metal hook right here, right down through a contact in that orange tube. It's still actually traveling in through the fuse. The spring stretches out and then boom, that spring snaps extremely quick inside, fast enough to actually break that load. There is one last feature within the load buster tool. One of my viewers mentioned SF6 gas. Now on our high voltage interrupters, they have a similar setup on a much larger scale and they're filled with what's called sulfur hexafluoride. It's an extremely dense gas. So as that arc forms, even though it's broken very quickly, the heavy sulfur hexafluoride gas snuffs out and deionizes the air so that arc can't stay intact. It, it basically extinguishes the arc. Maybe someone can help me out on this in the comments, but I don't believe there is sulfur hexafluoride in this tube. From my understanding, there is actually much similar to our cutouts. So for the cutout door, you can see it's actually not an enclosed tube. It's wide open at the bottom. Now the inside of the cutout door is lined with kind of a white powdery fiberglass looking stuff. Now, from my understanding, the arc has a chemical reaction with whatever kind of chemical is lined inside that door that actually helps extinguish the arc. So there's something similar that goes on within the load buster. Let's actually read what's written right on the manufacturer's website. What it says is, the rapid elongation of the arc confined within the arc extinguishing chamber and the narrow annular space formed between the trailer and the liner and by the efficient deionizing action of the gases yielded by the surrounding material of the trailer and the liner. 
All right, so let's take one more look at this load buster in action. Now, I should mention also that when you affix this onto your universal hot stick, it says right in the instructions to be used on a minimum stick length of six feet. That gives you a foot for your hands, and it says five feet of clearance must be being tamed between yourself and the switch. I also mentioned on the capacitor video, which you may not have been able to hear, that you wanna reach across the switch. So if I'm on this side of the switch, I've got my hot stick, I'm reaching across the cutout and hooking onto the ear pulling towards me. So you can see here where it's hooked onto that top ear. You then rotate that and you can see this guy right here. That's what's gonna hook into that brass ring. So you kinda of gotta manipulate that around once that's hooked in place, you're gonna to wanna to open that with a good firm pull. If you get that halfway open and it doesn't activate the spring inside the mechanism, you're gonna start getting a whole lot of arcing around here and around here. That's only making a very temporary contact. Also, the downward force helps improve that connection. If you release that too early, you're gonna get some arcing going on. You might panic, try to remove your stick. Your stick's tangled up in the cutout. So make sure you're good and confident. Practice it a few times on a de-energized cutout before you go up into the live stuff. All right, so we get our stick in place. We turn our head away to the side and we give it that one firm downward pull. You hear that click. There should be very, very, you might see a few sparks come out. That's normal. We're gonna twist it to the side, the door falls off and remove our load buster. Super easy reset. Before we do that, if you look at the top you will see there's a counter, it says 65, if you can see that. Now, once you reset this load buster, you grab this little collar, give it a tug, it is now reset. That counter has now moved up to 66 operations. Every time you haul this device out and you're about to use it, whether it has been just reset or reset in the tail the whole time, before you use it, you wanna test the spring tension. If you haul up on this, and there's no tension there, the device needs to be serviced immediately. It's not gonna work. Now, it's a good habit to actually check the spring inside as well. Before you go up and use it, give it a pull. The, the spring released, it functioned as it should. You're gonna reset that, and away you go. Now, when you reset it, if it's still sitting back here somewhere, things didn't reset properly. You can try and give it a open, close, test for the spring tension. Now we're good to go. Now, one last thing, guys, you want to keep this guy in good condition. You don't want it bouncing and flopping around the tails. So, actually, it does come with a carrying case. It fits quite nicely and snug inside. We're going to lock that up, pack it away on our tails. And thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to drop me a fist bump along with where you're watching from. And we'll see you next time.